So I've tried to make it work, Joe Brown. You got there. Uh, previously won. No, this is our top four match here at Worlds. And there's that Amoongus. Yeah, of course, you can't come to the World Championships and not see an Amoongus on game one. Turn one here. Yuzi Ishigaki with the Calrex Ice Rider next to that mushroom. Compared to Michael Kells, Fluttermane and Chien Pao was his lead. This is going to use the booster energy to boost the speed of that Fluttermane, but honestly, it would have been one of the fastest Pokemon on the field regardless in this position. While Fluttermane could go on the offense here, try to target down a Shadow Ball against the opposing Calyrex Ice Rider, there is no way here, thanks to the presence of that Amoongus, for Michael to land both both a Shadow Ball and a secondary attack to guarantee the KO on that Calyrex Ice Rider to stop a potential Trick Room. So if Yuta loves Trick Room, Yuta wants Trick Room, this is the turn to go for it. Yeah, you better prove your worth if you really do want to be known as the biggest Trick Room fan out there, because there's many people that would like to take their claim to that fame. Yuta does not swap either of his Pokemon. He will Terrestrialize Amoongus on turn one into a Terra Fire. You usually see Terra Water is the terrestrialization choice uh, most common on Amoongus, but this time around, Yuta actually opting to go for Terrifier, resisting potential Icicle Crash on the other end. Michael does not fall for it, however, with his Chien Pao protecting, or Shifu's gotten onto the field for uh, free without taking any damage, and now Calyrex gets to click Trick Room, twisting those dimensions. These slow Pokemon will be moving first for the next four turns. An amazing adjustment, though, from Michael, correctly recognizing that the Urshifu is the perfect perfect counter for this Amoongus. While it is holding Rocky Helmet, it has turned itself into a fire type and the Urshifu is also holding safety goggles. So there's nothing stopping a surging strikes here from picking up that KO. You don't often see the Pokemon that loves Trick Room to switch out as it's set up, but Calyrex Ice Rider does swap on this turn into the Pelipper, setting up the rain thanks to his drizzle ability. Pelipper, everybody fell in love with Pelipper at the end of NAIC with Patrick Con team. Let's see if Pelipper can help Yuta get to the finals. With the rain being set, you might as well Terra or Shifu into the water type, getting additional boosted water damage from his surging strikes. The Sucker Punch doesn't work since he swapped out, so a great call from Yuta. And now Amoongus puts Chien Pao to sleep. It will be forced to sleep next turn, that first mandatory turn of sleep. Where's the surging strikes go? It goes into the Pelipper, the water type. That's going to be resisted but because of the Terra and the rain being set up, it sure doesn't feel like it, Gabby. It doesn't feel like it indeed, but that Pelipper has enough HP to hold on for another turn. And honestly, that aligns with how Yuta has approached using this Pokemon in the past. He made an adjustment coming into this tournament by giving Life Orb to that Pelipper so that its attacks would be slightly more powerful. And when you're facing down against an Urshifu who has, who has lost its weakness to any flying type attacks, I think a potential hurricane here could be huge. Amoongus could, can still try and provide a little bit of support here, it does have Pollen Puff as an attack, but there will be no target on the field as Aqua Jet into that Pelipper is a KO. Yuta nodding his head as he saw the Aqua Jet being uh, animation. There's understanding solid play from Michael to get that KO. Pelipper is down before getting any attacks off here in game one. Pollen Puff, though, on the offensive into Chien Pao to bring that down to under half HP. Chien Pao did use its first turn of sleep there, so there is the possibility that it can wake up next turn. Interestingly enough, though, Yuta sends in his own Urshifu in this position, opting to keep the Calyrex in the back of his party. And I think more importantly, sending in a Pokemon that doesn't necessarily benefit from the Twisted Dimensions. If this Urshifu is trained to be slightly slower, slightly bulkier, it's possible that Yuta is anticipating that it would be able to move first and put some pressure down onto the opposing Urshifu on the other side of the field. But still, you have to wonder, why didn't he send that Calyrex Ice Rider back out? And I don't think he wants to lose it yet. And you would think, even if Urshifu is not slower than the other version, at least it is inherently slower than Chien Pao. Exactly. So on, on Yuta's end, thinking that uh, you would be moving before Chien Pao. However, Michael has smartly swapped that Pokemon out out. And this Amoongus, Terrifier Amoongus, never stood a chance against Terra Water Surging Strikes from the Ushifu. You really don't see this too often in VGC. And interestingly enough, we do see Michael's own Urshifu attack first there. So that is a great indication on how these Pokemon are trained for both of these trainers.
Yeah, so that Zamazenta has gotten onto the field. Now it's all up to Yuta in his adjustments with his last two Pokemon. It's the close combat into the water type. It is enough. Maybe he needed the Pollen Puff on the double target to secure the KO. But he has, uh, because he's down to his last two Pokemon, Yuta's no longer able to swap out and reset those stat drops. And more importantly, there's none of those options we were talking about during team preview to try and pin the options available to the Zamazenta. Zamazenta, which is now on the field. Zamazenta will be taking decent amount of damage from a rain boosted surging strikes. Calyrex Ice Rider, I think, almost forced to go for high horsepower in this situation because you don't want to risk being caught off guard by a wide guard and having zero damage done for the entirety of this match. But given that one Pokemon is going to be wide guarding, I almost feel like whatever Pokemon Michael sends in here, it's going to be that Fluttermane will have a great opportunity, is still at full health as well, to target down either of these Pokemon. And, you know, as another cherry on top, because the booster energy already was used on that Fluttermane, there is no speed boost to make it even slower during the remainder of this Trick Room. Yeah, Yuta in a really tough spot right here in Game 1. Michael Kaus has been playing perfectly through these Trick Room turns. We'll see if Yuta can turn the tides of this battle down 2-3 to three in the Pokemon count. Zamazenta hasn't really been able to do too much it's been kind of more of a, a moral support coach so far for game one of uh, Michael Zen, but it's still working out. And that's all Zamazenta has to do in this matchup as it's such a difficult Pokemon for Calyrex Ice Rider to take down. Surging strikes into the Fluttermane is going to be a three hit KO. Obviously, Fluttermane not bulky enough to take those hits. So the, the classic three hit, one hit KO we all love to see from Surging Strikes or Shifu. Zamazenta took that uh, that attack actually relatively well. Yes. Uh, so really tough for Yuta. And the body press brings her Shifu down to its focus ash. Remember it had the defense dropped from the uh, the prior close combat. Now the Twisted Dimensions have returned to normal and Michael's two super speedy Pokemon are in the advantage. But Chen Pao is still asleep and is not guaranteed to wake up this turn. So Chen Pao, if it does wake up, should be able to pick up the KO on that Urshifu. And then it's just the Zamazenta facing down the opposing Calyrex Ice Rider. Calyrex Ice Rider is going to need at least two more high horsepowers. Obviously, a critical hit would uh, change that just a little bit, but not by much, in order to pick up the KO on that Pokemon. So Michael is still in a very comfortable position, assuming that the Chen Pao can wake up, but it's stays asleep. It will stay asleep. No attacks from Chien Pao here in game one and the Aqua Jet priority attack gets the KO. Michael down to just the Zamazenta in a 2v1 situation. Body press though, no sort of ruin on the field means that's not even a two hit KO. And the high horsepower plus a future surging strikes from Yuta's uh, or Shifu on his end should be more than enough to take down Zamazenta. I am a little bit curious to see just how much damage that this Urshifu Shifu could do to Zamazenta for a game two situation, but Yuta making a great prediction there, using D Tech to stop the KO on that Pokemon, giving Calyrex Ice Rider the opportunity to set up Trick Room. Now, this Calyrex Ice Rider will be able to attack into this Zamazenta the two times it would need to pick up that KO. And we see Michael go ahead and click forfeit, giving Yuta this game number one. The second Trick Room turns out to be the charm, as that was the checkmate for Yuta Ishigaki one victory away from moving on to Championship Sunday here in Honolulu. You saw it on Michael's face those last couple of turns. Yuta just reading him like a book, trying to just uh, surviving those trick room turns and also getting the benefit of Chien Pao staying asleep. That being said, though, it did feel like a great call from Utah to go for that second trick room. A lot of times trainers will be tempted to go for big, you know, damage, damage. I get the KO, it's 2v1. But using that second trick room just guaranteed that regardless of which Pokemon Michael chose to target with his next attack, there would be two more attacks remaining, which would guarantee enough damage. So Utah correctly identifying that to lock in the win condition, he didn't just need to attack, attack. He needed to ensure that he could attack in the future. Yeah, I mean, that was such a back and forth match. I really did think Michael had 
control through the Trick Room turns because it felt like Yusu was on the back foot. He sets up Trick Room and then swaps out Cowrx Ice Rider immediately. And you think, okay, well, as long as the Big Bad Restricted is not on the field and not taking advantage of Trick Room, I feel like, uh, you know, making a little positive run. But the Fluttermane never really got to do anything. Chien Pao stayed asleep through the whole game and Yusu slowly but surely brought the game back. That Fluttermane was such a threat initially too, right? Had it been able to connect an attack against the opposing Calyrex Ice Rider, we would be looking at a much different game. So thinking back to that turn number one, I think one of the adjustments that Michael has to be thinking about is bringing a different Pokemon that could perhaps check the fire type of Moongus, check that Calyrex Ice Rider better. And looking at it, this team sheet, you know that is the Entei. It has to be lurking in the back of his party for this game number two, if he doesn't just lead it outright. Well, Entei was so crucial in that top eight set against Diego, and you understand, I would imagine, Entei's been pretty darn important throughout the entire weekend here in Honolulu. It just provides so much damage and such a great Pokemon. So we'll see if Michael can make any adjustments. Will he force a game three, or will he be watching the finals with us tomorrow after this game. Amoongus Calyrex Ice Rider for Yuta compared to her Shifu Chien Pao on Michael's end. Unlike the previous game though, Michael can find an early knockout here against the Amoongus. This Chien Pao has access to Sucker Punch, sure, but it also is running Throat Chop and Icicle Crash. Not the most accurate move in the world, but if the Amoongus does not Terrastalize, Icicle Crash plus any damage from that Urshifu will pick up the KO. And that's exactly what we see, it connects. No Terra, no problem, but no one hit either. It hangs on with just barely enough hit points so that this Surging Strikes will go and hit twice into Amoongus. That is two ticks of Rocky Helmet. Who knows how crucial that is going to be later on in this game too. However, that means Calyrex Ice Rider has not been attacked on this turn. Yuta, the Trick Room lover, sets it up turn one of game one and sets it up again turn one of game two. Really living up to his reputation, and I gotta give a shout out for that. Calyrex Ice Rider is probably one of the most popular Trick Room Pokemon in the metagame right now, and Yuta showcasing exactly why it is so strong. Yuta has four turns now to take advantage of the Twisted Dimension to steal enough damage to power his way through this matchup once again. And knowing that he doesn't have the Amoongus available to him anymore, the Pelipper in this position certainly has a little bit more playability than what we saw in the previous game where it just switched in, took some damage, and then was KO'd. Could go for a Hurricane into the opposing Urshifu. It is not terrestrialized away from that weakness yet. Could also try and just double down on this Chen Pao, which will be immediately denied thanks to that Protect. Chen Pao in a really tough spot. Since it's such a fast Pokemon, that means it's going to be moving the slowest under the Trick Room, under these Twisted Dimensions. Glacial Lance is not going to hit it. The Urshifu resists, but it doesn't look like it, apparently, thanks to that critical hit. Urshifu in the red, but the Weather Ball goes towards Chien Pao's Protect, so Michael is not going to lose his Pokemon on this turn. The Surging Strikes with the uh, resisted hits, but the rain is up. Remember, there's no Terra Water this time around, so Urshifu's doing significantly less damage. Even still, though, we saw that Urshifu terrestrialize in game number one, and it still wasn't enough damage to pick up the KO on that Pelipper. This is a great opportunity for Yuta to once again go for the Glacial Lance, go for an attack onto that Chen Pao, and as long as you're confident, you can take a Swords of Ruin Sucker Punch into that Calyrex Ice Rider, you're going to be in a great spot. We saw Yuta early on in game one go for the Terrestrialization on that Amoongus to open up the opportunity for Trick Room. I think if Yuta is seriously considering the Chen Pao as the number one threat right now, you Trick Room, are you Terrestrialized this turn, you don't take super effective damage from Sucker Punch, you get that KO, and then you have the ability to resist the opposing Urshifu. But Michael did bring Entei, and while Yuta's the first person to switch, he won't be the only person to switch this turn. Pelber swapping into or Shifu in this slot. Michael can only sucker punch one slot on Yuta's end. Did he make the right call as his owner Shifu will leave the battlefield so Entei can join the fray. The sucker punch is into the Pelipper slot that swapped out. Chien Pao does no damage. His Glacial Lance is going to hit both of them, not doing too much damage, but importantly breaking that sash. 
and I think importantly as well, Entei is in a position where it cannot protect this turn because it has that choice band item. So Michael could try and get through Trick Room like many trainers do. You just rely on your priority attacks, maybe the combination of a Terra Normal Extreme Speed and a Sucker Punch to pick up the KO on has to be the Urshifu on the opposing side of the field, but that still will allow this Calyrex Ice Rider to deal some good damage with the Glacial Lance. Yuta still has time to find a way through the rest of this matchup, and look at the concentration on his face. This is going to be a very important term. We'll see how they read it. There are some Pokemon that don't care about whatever dimensions the games are in because you have priority attacks. And so Urshifu has Aqua Jet, Chien Pao has Sucker Punch, but this Entei has extreme speed, higher priority attack than those other priority moves. Yeah, extreme speed is guaranteed to go first. So while we will see both these trainers lock in their terrestrialization this turn, Entei will be attacking next. Big question though, Joe, who's the target and how much damage is it gonna do? We'll see, remember it is the Sword of Ruin ability boosting the damage from this choice band, Terra oh! Normal Extreme Speed into her Shifu, but not enough. Brings it down into the red and now rain boosted Aqua Jet with the critical hit. Chien Pao is out here in game two. Michael down to his last three Pokemon remaining. Now was a normal type. Glacial Lance is both single target and no longer resisted. So Entei is gone. Calyrex Ice Rider is gonna benefit from that attack boost as well when its chilling nay ability activates. That's exactly the kind of boost it's going to need as they were going into the end game here of this game number two, or Shifu on Michael's side of the field, holding on with just a little bit of health left. And the Zama Zenta, the Pokemon that has brought Michael so many accomplishments this season, still at full health, his final Pokemon to be revealed in this game two. Yeah, Zamazenta is his last hope of forcing a game three. Remember, Yuta still has the Pelipper in the back, so it's, he's got he's gonna have to take out three Pokemon compared to his two, especially the low health Urshifu remaining. Not long for the rest of this match because Glacial Ant will be able to knock it out. Yeah, this is a tough decision still. There is a wide guard present for the Zamazenta, and we saw Yuta, as soon as wide guard was on the field in game number one, pivoted immediately to only using high horsepower to deal damage. And you would think that the Calyrex Ice Rider would love to go for that Glacial Lance to pick up the KO you on gotta, the Urshifu. You gotta, you gotta, go gotta for protect the speed it. Tie. This is you the gotta. last turn of Trick Room. If your Aqua Jet can move first, and Michael gets it into the Urshifu on the other end. That's the first key to coming back in this game now because of wide guard glacial lance cannot do any damage it prevents the spread attacks but he goes for high horsepower he calls it right michael giving him credit and yuta is one knockout away from the finals now at plus two attack on that calyrex ice rider and we saw how much damage the high horsepowers did in game number one you know that this is going to be dealing a significant amount of damage to the Zamazenta. The big question is though, will it be able to take out the Pelipper and it misses? It hangs on, Pelipper is so clutch for you to, here's the rain boosted weather ball into Zamazenta, bringing it down to under half HP and the Calyrex Ice Rider, the Pokemon that's gotten Yuta this far, his restricted Pokemon of choice will set up Trick Room and next turn end it. Trick Room is now back on the field. Calyrex Ice Rider is in the driver's seat. All Yuta has to do is land an attack against the Zamazenta and he will be moving on. Will be taking a moment to play out these protect turns. It's a good time to recap. First protect guaranteed, second protect a 50-50, third protect roughly a 30% chance, well, and we'll see if we even make it that far. I, think it needs a, hey. I don't know if I've ever seen a quadruple protect. Doesn't even go for it. And Yuta with the victory, it's gonna be Italy versus Japan on Championship Sunday. Yuta Ishigaki twists the dimensions all the way to the finals. He loves Trick Room, and you can see why. On paper, Zamazenta is one of the toughest matchups for Calyrex Ice Riders players to compete against because you just struggle to deal damage to it. I mean, we saw how much damage those high, high horsepowers did